Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Real Tough Candy from realtoughcandy.io. Popping back on for another video with you today. People want to know. Candy, what's on your dock? What's on your machine? What are you working with? Well, today I thought I'd give you a little show and tell, show you what's on this dock, some of the apps and things I work with on a regular basis. Let's get right into it. Let's let's go down here. So here are the specs of this machine. Essentially, it's a mid 2015 MacBook Pro 15 inch, 16 gigs of RAM. That was intentional so I could do video editing on Final Cut Pro, do some graphics stuff and do some live streaming, multimedia stuff where I wouldn't have to worry about this machine crashing. So without further ado, let's just hop on to these icons here. Some boring stuff. This is really just meh trash about this Mac system info. This is just kind of boring. The real fun starts right about here with LibreOffice. Now this is essentially an open source version of Microsoft Word. And I wanted to try out Libre. I've heard, I had heard a few things about it and I said, well, it's open source, let's give it a whirl. I've tried in the past to use other open source alternatives to some of the more popular applications I use. For example, Photoshop, I've used GIMP. It just didn't have those granular controls that Photoshop has. Uh, same with Final Cut Pro. I've tried some open source editors in the past. Again, they were just lacking that nuance. But for the most part, if not 100% of the time, LibreOffice offers everything that Microsoft Word does. So I'm very pleased with this. I don't think I'll ever go back to Microsoft Word. Uh, and you can save these files here as Word docs, as .doc or .docx. A really good alternative to Microsoft Word. Let me minimize that. These next three are just pretty much basic business things. Keynote, that's like a slideshow creator. Calculator and numbers, that's kind of like a Mac version of Excel. System preferences, big deal. FileZilla, because apparently I needed to download this five times. I don't know what my problem was, but I downloaded this at least five times. This is an FTP client. I really haven't used this in any significant way in about two years. I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? Watch that, watch this, watch this. Oh, how satisfying. Goodbye. Keychain access. This allows me to access my password. So I'm not going to click on that today. This little application, this elephant is called MAMP. Now this gives you an Apache server along with a MySQL server. Fun fact, Macs actually come with a built-in Apache server and PHP. It ships with PHP. So you can actually serve PHP pages. Uh, it's really, if you're a newbie, it's, it's kind of intense. It can definitely be done, but the process is just a little too much. Even nowadays, I prefer to just use MAP. It's so easy to use. You just fire up your servers and you get to work. Um, there's also, there's like MAP, there's Champ, there's WAMP. I'm, there's probably like PAMP and Camp. I don't know. There's probably like a lot more. To the left of MAMP is Wireshark. Now, this is one of my earliest apps that ever went on this machine. This thing is a network analyzer. And if you're into security or think you might be into security, check out Wireshark. This is such a fun tool. You can have so much fun with it. This is a really powerful tool and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. This next one, this pina colada looking number is called Handbrake. And this is a video transcoder. And basically that's a fancy way of saying it can take one of my movies and turn it into an MP4 or something. I'm really pleased with this. For the options it offers, it saved me a lot of time and it's a lot more private than going to one of these third-party sites where they'll transform, you know, whatever file to a different file. Then we have Postman. This is an API tester. If you're a web developer, I highly recommend you check this tool out. There are a ton of different options here but you can just stick with the basics and you'll be just fine. This is a free tool also. I'm not sure if it's freemium or if the whole thing's just completely free no matter what, but either way, I definitely recommend it and it will make your developer life so much easier when you're working with APIs. This is OBS. This is another open source tool. As you can see here, this is recording. I use this exclusively for all my YouTube videos on both my channels, both Real Tough Candy and Tech Course Review. GarageBand has a big question mark on it. I'm not even gonna ask. The other tool I use for live streams when I'm doing interviews is Zoom. This boring blue circle is called Clip Grab. I use that for grabbing YouTube clips. These two are my Adobe programs, XD, that's for prototyping, and Photoshop. I use that for thumbnails. I use that for graphic design, all that good stuff. Final Cut Pro, 
I use that for video editing. After I'm done recording this video on OBS, I go in here to Final Cut Pro. Here is an icon for Proton VPN. I was using this, but didn't really like it. I didn't hate it, so I didn't toss it. I just don't use it. Maybe I'll get back into it, not sure, uh, but it's there. Notes, no big deal. We all know what those are. So here are my two privacy browsers, Tor browser when I'm looking for something really strong and then Brave browser. This was a new installation. I started using this just a couple days ago. I'm gonna be doing a full review on it, but spoiler alert, so far I'm freaking really liking it. And side note, if you are a Brave user, I am a verified creator, both on YouTube and realtoughcandy.com. And then I have my other browsers here, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. I also use these browsers for a lot of testing. Uh, so even though this isn't my main development machine, I do like testing on this machine with all these different browsers, just really easy to access. And then winding down over here, I have my set of editors. I am a JetBrains fangirl. I love PHP Storm. I also have WebStorm. I have PyCharm. Brackets, just to test it out. I don't really use that one on a day-to-day -day basis. Adam, I still love Adam. I love the Aurora Borealis theme. VS Code, I I get why people love it, but after using JetBrains, I just, it's kind of second place for me. And Sublime Text 2 is here also, so that's what I'll use just for, just for investigating or writing like one or two lines of whatever code. And then finally over here are my terminals. This is one of the coolest apps on this machine. Look at that. Is that not rad? I love this thing so much. It's called Cool Retro Term. It's on GitHub and you can check out these different profiles and use them. I just love it. It's just like, ugh, memories of an experience I never even had in the first place. I just, I play Vaporwave and use this terminal in the middle of the night and it feels amazing. And then here is my normal terminal. This is when I actually need to do some work. Uh, I still have it a little bit tricked out, nothing too fancy. Um, but as you can see, that's just like a normal terminal. And then the one, the only, the little smiley guy who's the finder and here's my finder right here. I'm gonna hashtag this video. I wanna see other YouTubers give tours of their dock or their desktop and see what they're working with. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tour. Thanks for watching as always. Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.